Before jumping into graphing sinusoids, let's take a look at where these graphs originate from, the unit circle. Recall that the unit circle has a radius of 1. Unit circles are unique because if we draw a terminal arm with any angle and create a triangle, the hypotenuse is always going to be the radius, which is 1. This creates some interesting properties when we take the sine or cosine of any given angle. For example, given the terminal arm in red, let's evaluate it as a triangle. We'll label the adjacent side as x and the opposite side as y. Taking the sine of this angle gives us opposite over hypotenuse. Because our hypotenuse is always 1, evaluating sine in a unit circle will always give us y. Taking the cosine of this angle gives us adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, our hypotenuse is always 1. Thus, cos of theta will always be equal to our x-coordinate. What if the angle we are given falls on one of the axes? For example, say we want to evaluate sine of 0. We need to draw a triangle given a terminal arm with 0 degrees. It may be difficult to picture the triangle formed by this position. So instead, let's imagine a triangle slowly shrinking as the terminal arm approaches the x-axis, or in other words, as theta approaches 0. And as we can see, as the opposite side gets very small, basically 0, the hypotenuse is roughly equal to the adjacent side length. So thus, for sine theta, we can say the opposite is equal to 0, and the hypotenuse is 1. This is going to give us 0 over 1, which is just 0. While we're at it, let's also find cosine at this angle. Since cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and our hypotenuse and adjacent are equal, at theta equals 0, this is going to give us a value of 1 over 1 for cos of 0, which in this case is 1. The same can be done in the opposite direction. As theta approaches 90 degrees, or pi over 2, as we just learned, we see the adjacent side shrink all the way to 0, and the hypotenuse now becomes roughly equal to the opposite side this time. Applying this to our unit circle, we see that the opposite and hypotenuse sides at pi over 2 must be equal to 1. Thus, this time, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1 over 1, or just 1. Again, let's find the cosine of this angle. This time, our adjacent side is equal to 0, and our hypotenuse, of course, is equal to 1. This is going to give us 0 over 1, or just 0. 0 over 1, which is 0. Putting all this together, we can then find the corresponding sine values for the remaining points on the unit circle. Filling in what we already know, we can write our values for sine theta and sine pi over 2. Without calculating sine pi and sine 3 pi over 2, can you guess what they might be? Notice that pi is exactly opposite 0 on this unit circle, and 3 pi over 2 is opposite pi over 2. Let's think about our squished triangle again. For the case of sine of pi, this gives us a value of 0 for our opposite side, meaning sine of pi is also 0. For sine 3 pi over 2, our squished triangle gives us an opposite side length equal to the hypotenuse, just like for pi over 2. An important thing to note here is that our hypotenuse is always positive, because our hypotenuse is found through the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared where the square takes away the negative sign. Thus, we get an answer for sine 3 pi over 2 of negative 1. By now we may have noticed a pattern emerge. Let's see if we can use our observations from our sine calculations in combination with our previous calculations of cos of 0 and cos of pi over 2. It appeared that sine was oscillating from 1 to 0 to negative 1 and back to 0 again. Assuming cosine is following a similar pattern, can you guess what cos of pi and 3 pi over 2 are? If not, that's okay, let's calculate them. Drawing our squish triangle shows us that the opposite side goes to 0. Our hypotenuse is equal to the adjacent side. That means calculating cos of pi will give us negative 1 over 1, or negative 1. Drawing another squish triangle at 3 pi over 2 will have our adjacent side go to 0 which means cos 3 pi over 2 is 0 over 1, which equals 0. 